Welcome back and thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to talk about why you probably shouldn't design your own house if you're a normal person and why I did. In June of 2020, shortly after we bought our land, I downloaded a software called Chief Architect Premier. It's pretty much known as the best residential home design software out there and it's used all across the country and the world. Since then, I have spent over 500 hours, and that's tracked in the software, learning the program, learning design, and figuring out how we want to lay out our house and all of the construction details that go along with that. Now, I'm a mechanical engineer by day job. I'm used to doing technical things. I strangely enjoy the detailed, tedious work that is drafting and figuring out the minutia and the layout of everything. So I'm gonna talk about three reasons why you shouldn't do what I did. And then weirdly enough, the same three reasons apply to why I did what I did and why I don't really regret doing it. The first is control. So when you do your own plans, you are basically the controller of every single detail. And for people that are not into construction or don't wanna know this level of detail, it is completely overwhelming. The amount of detail that goes into building a house and all of the materials, the dimensions, the layers, everything is super in depth and it takes a lot of knowledge and experience to kind of understand how that all goes together. For 99.9% .9 of the population, it's better just to leave it in the hands of an architect or to buy a plan that already has a lot of the details in it and maybe you have to make a couple design modifications and just pay someone to do those for you. Additionally, if you're gonna be hiring a general contractor to build your home, you really don't have to know any of these details because it's the general contractor's job to know the details and be able to interpret them from the plan and then make sure their tradesmen follow the details as written in the plan. The second main reason you shouldn't design your house is to save money. And this may sound a little bit counterintuitive because typically doing things yourself means you're going to pay less but maybe spend more time. And in my case, that actually has been the case, but here's why it won't work for a normal person. To use the software that I used, it's $200 a month to rent it, or for about three grand, you can buy the software outright. Your typical basic plan set will probably cost you between one and $2,000 with no modifications and no engineering. So that would basically pay for eh, about a year of the software that I've been using. The reason I've been able to use it for free is because I'm doing my master's degree part-time and Chief Architect is kind enough to have a student license that allows me to use it for free for non-commercial purposes. So in short, aside from the time aspect and the learning curve of using the software, you're probably gonna spend more money buying the software and figuring out how to use it for your plan than you would save by just buying an existing plan. The exception for this is if you have a super custom home and you actually hire an architect in that case, you're probably gonna spend between eight and $20,000 depending on the complexity of the home to hire an architect to design it all for you. And the last point I wanna make, and this ties in a little bit with the first one of control, is about learning. And quite honestly, if you don't plan on doing a lot of building throughout your life, and you don't plan on becoming an architect or even a designer or a rendering professional, you probably don't need to know the skill of designing and modeling houses in the virtual environment. For most people, your brain capacity and time is probably better spent learning other skills that can either pay you or save you money in other ways. So with all that said, let's talk about why I went against the grain and all of these reasons that I just stated and went ahead and tried this and I'm doing it myself. And I'd be lying if I didn't admit at certain points I asked myself, why am I trying this myself? Am I really saving anything by doing this? But in the long run, in retrospect, I'm glad I have undertaken this process and here's why. The first being control. I can control every single detail about the process. I'm very intimately involved with the design. I pretty much know how every stud and every nail is supposed to go into this house that we're going to be building. When I want something changed, I don't have to have a back and forth or a phone call with an architect and be at the mercy of their schedule. I can just open up the software and do it myself and it's done, it's on the plan. Not to mention the design visualization that using the software has, where I can do my own virtual walkthroughs and see how big the space is gonna feel like and how wide doors are gonna be. That's just something you can't quite get by looking at a 2D plan or even looking at a few 3D renderings that might be on the plan. I love being able to scroll through the model, change finishes, and really have a full picture of what this house is gonna look like in three dimensions before we get started on it. 
As I said, I'm able to use the software for free through my student license, and that has been a blessing. I would have spent a lot of money otherwise if I hadn't done this. And for something more custom, I'd spend 10X in hiring an architect to draw up the plans. I should note that even with all this background research and work on my part, I'm still going to be hiring a structural engineer for probably between one and $2,000 to take a look over everything I've done, give me advice, make sure that everything I've done is sound, and also help me with details that I either haven't had time to research yet or I just don't feel like doing. This just ensures that I haven't overlooked anything and that the structure is gonna be safe after it's built. Unless you're a PE in structural engineering and can do it yourself, I probably would not skip this. But really the main reason that I have enjoyed drafting our plans from a blank sheet of paper is really the learning that comes along with it. I really do enjoy learning. I consider myself a lifelong learner. And this is a skill that I really do think is going to come in handy down the road. I always plan to be building things. We're of course building our small scale house now. Eventually I'm gonna put a big detached shop in somewhere and then eventually we're going to have a much larger house built as an addition once we can justify needing that kind of space. Of course, all of these projects I plan to be intimately involved in and honestly doing a lot of the work myself just because I know it will then be done right and I take kind of a sense of pride in building stuff and it's just what I like to do. Some people like video games, some people like painting, I like building. But the amount of building knowledge I have gained through watching others through sources like YouTube and fine home building and even social media like Instagram is really awesome. And I think that it's information that will stick with me throughout the rest of my life and be beneficial as we're building all these other projects. Plus, I've learned the skill of doing 3D modeling and drafting for houses, which was something that really I had no exposure whatsoever to. And I think it'll come in handy down the road, maybe even as a little part-time side gig to do you know, design renderings or help someone turn their hand-drawn layout into kind of a 3D visualization so they can do what we did and take walkthroughs through it and see if that's really what they want or if they need to shift things around. Anyway, to wrap things up, that is basically my thought process on why you probably shouldn't do what I did and then why I went ahead and did it anyway. <laughs> it's a project that's been a huge challenge for me and I've gotten a lot of enjoyment and fulfillment out of doing it and learning the skills, but definitely for the average non-technical person, it's going to be completely overwhelming and just probably not worth your time. So if you've stuck with me this far, I really appreciate you watching. And of course, there is a lot more to come on this house build. We break ground in spring. Take care and I'll see you next time.